Mount Rushmore in the United States can probably be equated with places as iconic as the Statue of Liberty or the White House. It appears in popular culture, maybe even more often it is parodied in cartoons, it is present in science fiction and historical films. The idea to carve sculptures of famous Americans into the mountain came to South Dakota historian Duane Robinson in the early s he wanted to attract tourists to his picturesque region. The historian turned to sculptor Gutson Borglum for help, and the multi-year effort to turn the rock into a monument began. The project was originally to be implemented on another mountain range known as Lawn Eagle Peak. However, Borglum rejected the proposal because these mountains were too unstable and subject to severe erosion. Borglum chose Rushmore for the sculptures because it was made of hard granite. It was also he who decided who would be depicted on the rock and that it would symbolize the first years of the United States. The first portrait was a profile of George Washington, who is the founder of the country and symbolizes the emergence of the states. The second is Thomas Jefferson, the creator of the Declaration of Independence. Another president from the monument is Theodore Roosevelt under whom the Panama Canal was built. He symbolizes the development of the states. It was Roosevelt who brought the country to a new level and made it a world power. The fourth president to be immortalized on Mount Rushmore was Abraham Lincoln. He helped keep power and preserve the state during the Civil War and it was thanks to him that slavery was abolished. By the way, before Mount Rushmore got its name, the Indians called it the Six Forefathers, now it has become the mountain where the founding fathers of the United States are depicted. Rushmore, however, was named after the American who led the first expedition to the mountain. Work on the monument began in October and lasted 14 years. Despite such a period of time, about a million dollars were spent on the sculpture, this is a small amount of money by the standards of the scale of construction. The sculptures were carved using primitive methods, blowing up with dynamite where someone's nose chin or eye would be, and then working with chisels, jackhammer, and drills. It was decided to leave most of the rock that remained after cutting at the base of the mountain, this is how it lies today. Borglum himself did not live to finish the construction just a few months later, and the work on the sculpture was continued by his son. Indian protests the creation of the monumental work on Mount Rushmore had one simple purpose, to celebrate the triumph of modern society and democracy. For the local Lakota people, however, it epitomized struggle and desecration. Six forefathers, like many other mountains in the area, was a sacred place for the Indians. Besides, six forefathers and the entire Black Hills area where the mountain is located were given to them by the American authorities back in. There was a treaty confirming this. However, the reservation from this place did not turn out after some time, gold was found on the territory of the Black Hills. So the Indians were forced to give up the terms of the treaty by force. Today, Mount Rushmore is one of the most visited attractions in the United States. It has an excellent infrastructure and millions of tourists come here every year. Take a look at how it was built. This is what Rushmore looked like before it was built in. One of the first dynamite explosions of a rock. The cabin where Borglum and the Masons lived during construction. Curious shots of how the monument to the Founding Fathers of the United States on Mount Rushmore was made. A team of sculptors stands over what would later become the forehead of the first. So, President, at right is team leader Gutson Borglum. The first profile is emerging. This rock was called the Six Forefathers by the Indians and was one part of the roots for spiritual journeys. Borglum on the Bow of George Washington The design of the monument in the museum. Presidents were to be carved at the waist however, there was not enough money for this. Uh, in order to produce the portraits, the rock had to be constantly blasted with dynamite. One of the project participants with dynamite in his hands. And this is Thomas Jefferson's facial work, 1935. Markings of the Eye The sculptor now carves the eye of the president, 1936. Gutzen Borglum's son and the sculptor himself observing the work, 1935. 
the 32 American president Franklin Roosevelt came to see the work of sculptors. Franklin is a distant relative of Theodore Roosevelt who is carved into the cliff face. And this is literally a year before the project was finished. To look into Lincoln's eyes or rather into one eye Borglum and his team managed to do it more than once. 1937 Working on Roosevelt's profile with air hammers 1940. Completed sculpture 1941. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. There will be cool content to come.